Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Tonight, I'm gonna be working on the ZX Spectrum. Let's get stuck in. Most of this video was shot last year with my old Sony camera, while the last part was shot on my new Panasonic camera. You may notice differences in the audio and video quality. So this here is the power brick that came with the ZX Spectrum. Has a nice Sinclair branding. You know, it's a bit dirty, I could clean it up. This is what was inside of it. I've opened it up and taken this out. So there's a large transformer capacitor. There are some diodes here on the side. This is a very rudimentary, unregulated DC power supply. And since it's designed to run on 220, 240 volts in other regions, it's not gonna work for me. What I thought about doing was replacing this, but saving these wires. Of course, I'll have to change the plug out with a US plug, and that way I can keep this little box. To accomplish that, I've ordered this small switching power supply. Its output is rated 7.5 volts at one amp, which I found to be a decent amount of power to run the ZX at least while there's no accessories plugged into it. So I'm gonna open this up, gut it basically, install it inside this box, and hopefully we're gonna have a nice modern multi-voltage switching power supply for the ZX Spectrum. So I do have to say this is as light as a feather, so I hope it's not a total piece of crap. Well, it's very simple, and I mean, I'm no expert at power supplies, but yeah, there's not a lot going on here. What is nice is there's at least a decent separation here between the high voltage and low voltage sides. This little transformer of unknown quality is what's keeping you from blowing up the spectrum. There's a little opto isolator here, and there is a cap. All right, so here's the setup. I have this multimeter measuring current, I have this me multimeter measuring voltage, and I have a power resistor hooked up to the power supply here. So we're gonna turn this on, that's an eight ohm power resistor. That should draw around 900 milliamps or so, at the 7.5 volts this thing outputs. And let's see what happens when we turn it on. All right, we're getting, on this one you see we have almost 900 milliamps, and here we're getting 7.25 volts, which is good. This is close to the limit, because I measured the spectrum on my bench power supply, and at 7.5 volts, or actually I put it down to 7.2, it draws around 700, 680 milliamps. So with this power supply setup, I will have no room to plug any accessories into it. But if you watched my last video on the Spectrum, when you have this low of a voltage, 7.27, the voltage regulator inside the Spectrum, which brings it down to five volts, works a lot less hard. So it keeps a lot of heat out of the Spectrum, actually. So that's why I decided to not use a nine volt power supply, because there's plenty of nine volt power supplies at two amps, whatever, that would give it lots of power. So now I know this is working, I'm going to do the work to put this inside this case. Okay, so I have the original cord soldered on. Remember that it is a center negative power on the ZX Spectrum. I'll of course check that first before I plug this into the Spectrum, just to make sure I have it done correctly. All right, so here's the original power cord, which I'm gonna reuse, really because it has this nice sort of strain relief on here, which I wanna keep. And just for everyone who doesn't know, this is the international standard for colors. It is not what is used in the United States. The brown wire is the live or hot, as we call it in the US, and the blue wire is the neutral. This is the UK plug. I pop this open to pull the wire out. These are just so well made. These plugs are pretty damn amazing. Really thick, thick prongs. In fact, I think this is an older one that's not compliant anymore because normally half of the prong is covered in plastic. That way, if it's not all the way inserted into the plug, it's only partially in, you can't have something metal drop down and short out against the hot and the neutral. But inside, you can see that this has a 13 amp fuse, which is pretty hefty considering that was just a little DC power supply. I have a feeling that should probably be have been a much smaller fuse. Maybe someone had changed this out at some point. Very cool, I'm gonna put a crappy US plug on here now. All right, let's give this a final test. It has a standard US grounded plug on it, center negative like that. And if I turn the power chip on, we're getting 7.7 .7 volts positive, which is perfect, center negative. So if I put it in the power supply case like this, then I can use a zip tie to tie it onto this standoff. People are probably gonna complain that I should have done something with a 3D printer to make this a little more stable, but doesn't shake around in here. 
and it's held on fine. And when the lid's on there, it's gonna be safe. All right, here's the smoke test. My new switching power supply is in the brick here, which now weighs nothing. It's plugged into this power strip, it's turned off, plugged into the ZX, and I have the PVM connected, so we'll see what happens when I turn on the power. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so the power, this connector here is a little bad. I'm gonna need to get some sandpaper and just sand it down and put some deoxid on it. It's not making good contact in the ZX. <laughs> All right, try number two. Deoxid it, sanded the connector down. Let's see what happens when I turn it on now. There we go. It's working. Boy, do I forget how to use this already. Oh dear. <laughs> you obviously get used to this and then second nature, right? For me, not quite. Go to 10, enter, run, enter. Hello, there we go, it's working. All right, thumbs up, power supply is sorted. All right, so next up for the Speccy, something to help load programs. If you remember from my last video, I was using this Android phone and it was very unreliable loading programs. I had a lot of feedback from people in the comments saying that the volume of this phone is not gonna be loud enough, especially for this issue two spectrum. The thickness of the bars determine how loud it is and they could tell that it wasn't loud enough. So I ordered this from China to hopefully fix the problem. It's a little headphone amplifier and it was just a few dollars off eBay. So I'm gonna assemble this kit. We're gonna see if this helps the loading problem with the games. So there's the kit, it's got an input and it's got an output, volume control, DC input here. It is a stereo headphone amp. It uses the NE5532P chips there, probably some kind of op amps or whatnot. I'll put an eBay link in the description for this. Well, I've been testing out the headphone amp using my Sony MDR7506s. These are studio monitors. These have very high impedance and when you plug it into your mobile phone directly, you just don't get good sound quality out of these. They're not loud enough. But with this amp, I gotta say, it's just simple op amps on here, but it's quite loud. This is no audiophile grade equipment here, but psh, to my ears, playing an MP3 off Google Play Music sounds absolutely fine. So I think this is gonna work well on the Spectrum. Let's give that a test. All right, let's take a look how this works. So I have the amplifier here connected to my phone. I've created a proper stereo to mono cable right here. That's plugged into the ear input on the spectrum. Power supply is connected. This is my modified one. And I have it hooked up to the HDMI monitor here. Okay, so I've been playing around with this and I've been having some issues. So I'm trying to load Jet Set Willy. So I just stopped the tape and I hit play again. So the pilot tone happens and then Okay, there it loaded that time. So it seems like it's a little bit sensitive at loading. There's a volume control knob here and currently I have it set to about maybe this position here, kind of a little bit to the left of the 12 o'clock. This is a typical volume pot. So, you know, kind of goes from here all the way to there. And I find that if you foodle around with that, it kind of gets it working. Now I'm using this ZX spectrum program on here. I can't remember what it's called. And there are differences from one tape image to another. I, I find that some load reliably and other ones I have to fiddle with the volume knob. But fiddling around I kind of get it working and it takes a little bit of trial and error but this is definitely helping because before I really had trouble loading anything. But I have got this working already once before so let's see what happens if it's a repeatable process. Darn it we got tape error. But it almost loaded the whole thing, so this isn't quite right. So I'm going to reset the spectrum and we'll try again. Let me uh, turn the volume down a little more. Load. Can't see it. it's under that. Hit play. People were telling me that the bars, so that time it didn't even detect the program name. 
They were saying the bars should be the same thickness. So maybe I need a little more volume. The red looks a little thicker than the cyan. Okay, well, it says jet set. So here we go again. Let's see if it loads. Oh yeah, there we go, it loaded. Sorry about the noise. Uh, it's really cold today in Portland. It's below freezing right now outside, so my furnace is running to keep me from freezing. Jet set really loaded. I currently have the volume on the, the volume knob set to about 12. Whoa, obviously this is supposed to happen. I have it set to about 12 noon, straight up, and that seems to work. The phone is maxed out. Who knows? All right, let's see if this game works. I look like I'm in the bathtub here. And space jumps. There's a there's a toilet with a flapping lid. <laughs> and let's see, space jumps. I don't know what other keys do anything. Okay, I see Q and W move left and right and so do O and P. Space jumps. Oh boy. I've never played this game in my entire life. So I have no idea. Whoa! There's a man! Oh! Master bedroom, they're pointing me away. Uh, okay, so I can't jump up there. And he's gonna hit me, so I have to jump over him fall down. Ah, stairs. Okay. First landing. Oh! Now I look like a... like a flying thing. How do I go up? Okay. Uh, I push the A key and that seems to be changing the color. People are probably screaming at the screen. You have to do this! Okay, V also jumps. It's interesting how there's so many different controls. Why do I look like a flying thing, but I can't seem to fly? There's a big sh foot. The nightmare room. Love it. Oh, I'm back to me again. Oh, oh, I'm being chased by a saw. I, I am pathetic at this game. Okay, I, I am basically dead. These are my extra men in one more time, and I am, I am gone. Okay. <laughs> so Monty Python. All right, so we had one game working. Let's try a different game, make sure this is not just a fluke. See if my volume setting on the amp actually does the trick. Load and hit play. I'm not changing any volume settings. We're just gonna see if it works. Bar size looks even. Ah, see, it didn't work. It didn't, it doesn't say Tetris. So I guess turn it up. I don't know. Oh, look, it still says Tetris 4 though. So it detected it. Well, that's annoying, so it just rebooted. I assume that's like the equivalent of tape error. I don't know. I'm gonna try loading this again. So clearly that's not working, it's still playing. Well, let's reset. I'm gonna turn up the volume. I, mean, I don't know what else to try. It's not detecting it. Turn it up even more. Now I'm basically most of the way turned up. Oh, yeah. Immediate tope lo tape loading error. It does make a sound out of the speaker. I can hear the, the audio coming through. And then it crashed. <laughs> but it got a lot further. It literally was almost at the end. It's super inconsistent. I have one theory. When I had the headphones plugged into this amp, if my cell phone was nearby and was transmitting on the cellular radio, I could hear it through the headphones. And I wonder if this is picking up interference. This phone, it has cellular disabled, but it has Wi-Fi on. So I'm wondering if I turn off the Wi-Fi, I don't know if it's gonna even load the program anymore, but I'll put my other phone on the other side of the room here. Okay, actually Wi-Fi's off, phone's on airplane mode. Let's see what happens, I'm gonna leave it. Well, look at that. I stood away from it with the phone on airplane mode and it loaded. So you can get 48K effects or 128K music. Well, I don't have the music. And let's say start game. And there it is, Tetris.
This is kind of a neat version, too. Yeah, you play two-player Tetris, and um, it's neat. There's, like, two independent games, and you play against each other, stuff like that. I guess I should do this one more time, and if it works a second time, then I'm going to chalk it up to interference. So I'm going to reset the spectrum. We're going to load again and hit play. Well, well, it worked. Second time. I think I might be onto something. I'm going to try another game, and if it works as well, then that chalks it up to interference causing my problems. All right, this game is called Ultra Reflect. Let's see if it loads. Nope, it's not even showing the name. Volume is maxed out. Okay, you are. I'm gonna stand away now. Okay, so this game worked as well. Ultra Reflect, freeware, okay, play. Okay, I don't have a joystick interface. It kind of sucks I have no joystick interface. So keyboard is gonna have to do. I can't remember how to start this game, but that's my error. All right, so I think I figured out the tape loading. I reloaded Jet Set Willy after loading those other two games, and sure enough, I had to set the volume control back to the same position I had it at the first time for Jet Set Willy to load consistently. So clearly, there's a little bit of an issue with interference from my cell phone and also potentially the volume levels of the different software packages that are on this program. I don't really know. If you have experience using this app, uh, let me know in the comment section below uh, how it works for you. So moving on to the next thing to do to the Spectrum, I want to fix this ugly metal cover here. Remember I removed it in my last video, which sort of bent it up, and you can see the ripples here from that. Plus there are little specks where it's missing. I've actually colored them in with a Sharpie. But overall it's got some scratches and dents and it just doesn't look so great. The keys luckily look fine and the case itself is good for the most part. It's just this cover is ugly. So after my last video on the Spectrum, Peter from zxrenew.co.uk emailed me saying he was going to send me some stuff for my Spectrum. If you haven't seen his store before, I'm going to put a link in the description below. Please take a look at it. He sells a bunch of Spectrum parts to jazz up your Spectrum and make it look just as good as new again. So the box came like this in the mail and it says dust cover for the ZX Spectrum, which is kind of cool. He didn't tell me exactly what he was sending, but let's open this up and take a look inside. All right, well, right off the bat, here's this, the dust cover he sent. And that's pretty nice, actually. It's a perfect fit for the Spectrum. It's perfect for me, actually, because I will be displaying my Spectrum on my little shelf of cool computers. Dust cover is pretty unobtrusive, but more exciting. Peter sent me a brand new keyboard membrane. This is fantastic, because you guys remember my last video, I had to cut these and try to make this thing work again. And now they're short and they're probably gonna die again. And then last up, we have a new keyboard cover. Brand new, shiny, and not a single mark on there. Comes with 3M double-sided adhesive. So all right, let's yank the Spectrum apart and I'll install these parts. All right, so now I have the top cover here. I did stick this down with some additional tape, but I didn't put that much on there. So I assume this is gonna come off pretty easily. Oh no, look, it's re-sticking again. I had just added this little bit of tape. See the black tape there? A little bit on there and a little on the side. There was enough sticky residue left behind that it stuck again. I'm gonna have to clean all this off before I put the new cover on. I can just lift off this keyboard here. And then there's the old keyboard membrane underneath there. So I'm just gonna peel this up. There it is. It's old and it's actually working pretty well considering. All right, so I'm gonna try using Goo Gone to get some of this adhesive off. And I don't really know how I'm gonna get this off. I might have to kind of scrape at this with a, a screwdriver. First, I'm gonna apply this with a cotton swab. Get this nice and soaked 
and we're just gonna put this on here and let it sort of soak in a little bit. Hopefully it can work at the adhesive a little bit. All right, I have an old credit card here and I'm just gonna scrape away. Okay, it's, it's having an effect, barely, but it's working. all the glue is off the spectrum. It was definitely quite a bit of work to get this off. The goo gun I was using just did not do the trick. So I had to resort to WD-40, which is a much stronger solvent, but in the end got this thing totally clean. So before I stick the new keyboard cover on, we need to test the keyboard membrane with the keyboard in the working ZX just to make sure that everything is working perfectly. And then I will peel off the adhesive tape to stick this down. So the keyboard membrane plugs into these two connections on the ZX. So I can tell that this is upside down, so it needs to go this way, so it connects perfectly there and there. And there are little pegs all over this cover here, and the keyboard membrane just aligns through all the pegs. Just make sure it is down properly on all of them. The little plastic pegs go into the keyboard rubber part here. So here's my ZX Spectrum. I had to replace all of these RAM chips to get this thing working properly. I have this slot cover stuck on here at a little bit of a heat sink plus these heat sinks stuck onto these two chips as well. These get so hot in here. And all I have to do is plug these two ribbon cables into these two connectors. So with the computer powered up, I tested all the keys and everything worked absolutely perfectly. So I've removed the top from the spectrum again and I've made sure that everything is aligned just right. And I guess it's time for me to install this metal cover. So I still have the tape covered up. And let's just see how this works if I lay it on top. So I notice when I hold this down on the sides, if I push in the middle here, the metal sort of bends. So it is sticking up a little bit. It does it on both end, the top and the bottom. So I guess I'm just gonna go for broke. I'm gonna peel all of this 3M adhesive backing off and stick this on. I was gonna do it on the sides only, but because it flops around on the top and the bottom here, I'm gonna do all four sides. So there you go, what do you guys think? The keys all push down correctly. And yeah, I mean, this this looks really nice. Really, really nice. The adhesive worked well on the top and the bottom because it's well stuck down all the way around, no flopping around whatsoever. It's a very tight fit, especially by the RF modulator. So I wanna make sure that this ribbon cable doesn't get pinched. So I'm gonna kind of pull it forward like that. And then we're going to put the screws into this thing. Now the Spectrum is all beautified and back together. I was gonna play some games, but I ran into a little issue. With it hooked up to my scan converter, it looks like garbage. What is all this horrible interference I'm seeing? Hopefully you'll be able to see this on the video, but there's just a whole lot of high frequency noise on the picture. Now I currently have this hooked up to my SCART scan converter. This thing does a pretty good job with a PAL signal, but this same problem happens on the retro tank and also on my Sony PVM. So if you had a similar problem to this, you might be led to believe there's something wrong with the computer. It also wouldn't be out of the question to try to blame the cheap switching power supply that I put inside here. The old power supply was linear and probably a hell of a lot cleaner than this when it came to high frequency noise. But the actual problem is not the power supply or the computer or the video interface box that I'm using. It's this thing right here. It's the video cable. This cable has two RCA jacks on it and a very thin black wire here interconnecting these two jacks, but they are yellow in color, which would typically indicate that this is good for video. But actually, this cable is crap. Here's another RCA cable. Let's try this one out, see what happens. 
And would you look at that? All of that high frequency interference is completely gone. These machines just aren't known for having the clearest video output around, but all of that high frequency noise that I was getting before, that's unusual even for an issue too. But all of those problems, they were caused by this RCA cable. And you know what? I've actually had problems with these before. This is probably totally fine for audio, but any high frequency application like this, it just picks up a ton of noise. And I get those same interference patterns on other computers too, not just on the ZX Spectrum. So I spent about 45 minutes trying to load a game on the Spectrum, all sorts of different games off that app, different volume levels, plugged into the phone directly, plugged into the amp, nothing works at all. So I don't know if I'm dealing with a fault on the Spectrum or my input's not loud enough. Sometimes it tries to load, I'm trying to load Bionic Commando. As you see, it says Bionic there, but I always get a tape error. There's gotta be something wrong with this Spectrum. I mean, it can't be this bad. So I'm calling it quits for now. I can't spend any more time on this computer. At least it looks nice now. And I have a nice dust cover for it. I don't think I've ever showed this before on the channel, but down in the basement, I have a man cave, which on this wall here, I have a nice little display of some of my nice 8-bit computers. And I think I'm gonna put the Spectrum down here next to the Field Found 64. We have a TRS-80 pocket computer and we have an Atari portfolio. So we'll just put this right here. Just like that. And the Spectrum has its new home. So that's gonna be it for this video on the ZX Spectrum. I wanna send a huge thank you to Peter from ZX Renew for sending me those parts to make my ZX Spectrum look as good as it possibly can. It looks great on the shelf in the room over there with all those other 8-bit computers. The ZX has been an interesting machine for me because I've always wanted to play with one, but every time I go to use the thing, it is so frustrating to me. The keyboard itself is frustrating to use, just the key combinations, though I assume you get very used to that and you get pretty quick at it. But the fact that I just can't reliably load any software, in fact, tonight I was unable to play a single game. I don't know what's going on there and if it's my machine or all issue twos, but at this point, I think I'm not gonna try to play games on that thing anymore. I'd rather just use an emulator. Now, I know a lot of my viewers have very fond memories of the ZX Spectrum, and I don't wanna take away from that at all. But from my eyes, having never used one or never had one, it is a very difficult machine to love, especially when I compare it to a Commodore 64, a peer of its time, there's just a huge gulf of usability between those two machines. Anyhow, I'd love to hear your comments about what I'm talking about down in the comment section below. So put your stories down there. You can give me a thumbs up if you like this video, or if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down. You can subscribe for more videos. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.